thank you very much. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Peterson Museum. My name is Mark Langer. I'm the team historian for the Dodgers. And normally when I give a presentation, everybody gets that strange look like it's team historian, a real title, they're kind of skeptical. And I have to explain, it's not a fancy history title. At Orange Coast College, and this will be his fourth season as the Angels team photographer. And Matt, I want to ask you your background in terms of Photography. Were you the type of kid when you were three years old had the camera in your hand? How did uh, how did photography and Matt Brown go hand in hand? Stealing my father's camera was a problem um, to the point where he finally had enough when I was going through film faster than I could afford the film. Well, for me, the US, USC was a bigger part of my life than the Dodgers were. The Dodgers were actually. Um, to be a fan of the Dodgers for me came in my first game. Uh, my neighbors took me to my first Dodger game after my grandma had just passed. But this one, I, I talked to Clayton about a couple weeks before Old Timers Day, and I said, Clayton, you know, this might be Sandy's last time in uniform. I don't know if that's, know if that's the case or not. I just threw that out there. Why not, right? So I said, Clayton, would you like to do, can I get a portrait of you and uh, uh, Sandy together in the, in the bullpen? And, you know, he agreed to it a couple weeks ago. So, from Boston, in this stance, just like that. And he said, he looked at both of them side by side, and he said, well, what's the difference? I said, well, your head's tilted. Yeah. I said, I don't know shit, I don't know anything about baseball. I, I, just, I just take pictures, and I said, your head's tilted. And so, we go to the next frame. Grand slam, right off. <laughs> I take the full credit for that as grand slam. I tell man in the mirror that his head was tilted in this photograph. So, uh, thank you, that's, so I've never explained that. He doesn't even know that. So you're a photographer, the hitting coach? Yeah. That's all it takes is an angle. Now look, I am always looking for new material. So my next pregame show, when you hear the story of John Sue, our batting coach and part-time photographer. That's, uh, thank you, John. I have, I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you very much. All right. Well, this one again, I had to use my, my influence with Oral Hershiser. Uh, this is actually Dr. Joe's uh, fantasy camp. Doctors. He, he invited his doctor friends to uh, come to his camp and be a part of uh, playing games at Imperial Beach uh, against other doctors. And um, it's funny because Sandy, I guess, was on the table before uh, this, the, the operating table before uh, Dr. Joe was going to operate on his shoulder. And he asked Sandy if he would come to his fantasy camp. And of course, Sandy obliged. But <laughs> Um, anyway. it's, good, it's good to write, ask right before the surgery. <laughs> He's not no, he was a very smart man at Dr. Joe. Anyway, I, I had asked uh, Oral, I said, Oral, you know, Sandy's in camp, and we could do you know, it'd be nice, because he was one of the instructors also. And I said, Sandy, uh, Oral, can we get, you know, if you got a uniform, you think we can get Sandy to get a uniform and take this picture of the two of you guys together? Because I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get just a picture of Sandy. No, I said, yeah, I want, to try, I want a picture of you guys together, too. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I took the picture of Sandy and Oral, and then I said, Sandy, can you take off a sec? I want to take a picture of Oral. So I took a picture of Oral by himself, <laughs> and then I had Sandy come and do this, and then he gave me this nice, nice look and shot that. At the time, I was very excited because I shot that on my two and a quarter transparency film, I mean, and it was uh, one light. I think John Holkey was there with me, and it, and it just a shot you would expect to get in November of, you know, I think it was 1990. I think it was probably 80. 788, and it just happened to be a nice moment that they were talking, and it happened to be with the right lens in the background. Uh, I think it was in the stands shooting, just who knows what I was shooting. But I ended up finding these two talking together, and I, I really liked the fact that Mike was listening to what Roy was saying. I'll try to do overheads with this, this, uh, this setup, and I've done it for USC football inside the locker room, I've done it for home plates. I try to do it whatever I can because it's different, it's just a different angle. Gets me up off the ground a little more and gets me off the eye level, but it just it's just a typical Vin. Does Vin has that calling? So, well, that's my question now because behind the scenes we, we know about the players. Obviously, in 31 years you've, you've had a chance to see Vin behind the scenes. Uh, what does Vin Scully mean to you in terms of not only what you see but working with him uh, over the years? He's just obviously he's very iconic and he's such a lovely man. He, very friendly, you know me by name, and he just takes the time to see how you're doing, and then he asks for shots, and there's certain shots he doesn't want, he doesn't want any alcohol, but no wine bottles, no beer, no anything in him, and he's doing it involves alcohol. Huh. But there's so many, I've been blessed to have, between the Tango Sardos and the 
Lee Scully, uh, all these iconic figures, Sandy Colfax. It, it's just awesome to have these kind of guys around Dodger State. It kind of helps with the, the brand of the Dodgers. I mean, I think he's larger than the Dodger players because you'll know, really only remember him before you remember you know, the, the 1995 uh, roster. I mean, <laughs> Um, we had just gotten out of the bottom of the ninth, we were not, we didn't score, and I was like, thinking to myself, I gotta do something different. Just sitting on the inside, for the first base side, and so I decided, ah, I'm gonna go upstairs and get my setup. So I set up my, my fish eye, put it on top of my pole, uh, set my, my remotes up, um, the remote trigger, and uh, the home run is hit, and he's rounding, you know, third base coming home, and so I run out there to try to get something different, which is a picture of him coming in all play with a little circle around the players. And uh, I didn't know that he, before this, he slid in home play. I don't know if he went the feet first in home play. I never saw it, because I'm literally holding up like a fishing pole, aiming it down, hoping it, hoping it hits and not coming right off. And so this is what I ended up with. And uh, one of these images I ended up on the Sunset Yellow. Yeah, well, and, uh, or either, you know, Bozo is getting his, uh, his clown hair done. But that's, uh, this is pretty much, I guess, part of baseball now because back maybe 20 years ago, you never had this type of of. Tell me, where where is this pool located, John? Uh, just so happens it is uh, in my old roommate's house, Derek Hall's home. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, was it Chase Field? Uh, at the time, it was uh, very quite angry. <laughs> I guess they they just won the division, and this had to catch you, I guess, by surprise. I, I don't think there was a, a, a pre-game plan that if they win the division, let's go hike over the right field wall. Well, there, there was pre-game talk beforehand. I mean, oh. there, this was not during the, after the game. This was before the game. This was before, the day before. If we win, we're going to go. And I, we were all standing by the door. I mean, I was standing by the door with my wet gear and my dry gear. I said, wet gear is for inside. The, the clubhouse for the champagne and the dry gears for what I had on the field. And so this all happens. The players decide, oh, we're going to go for it. We're going we're to go for it. So we go, the players start running down the stairs, and there's two guards staying at the bottom of the stairs. There's no way they can stop me. They said, just put your alcohol down. Put your alcohol down. That was what they were worried about. So next thing you know, they, everybody starts hauling ass to haul them to go out to, to the right field. And um, I was the tail trying to catch up. And it's probably one of my favorite pictures because, you know, BJ was a, a big part of the Angels and a big part of the LA area. He was always a nice photographer to me. And like, that was like one of the beginning years for me, just when kind of started. And he was just a, a huge, a super guy. I just wish I was able, our state training was in Vero Beach. And I just wish I would have been in Arizona and be able to play some of the game, baseball games that they have. They pick up games that they threw together. I never knew, never got to experience that. Because that doesn't exist anymore.